Tim Moss with Custom Guns Ammo and Repairs. What I'd like to go over with you today is a, a neat product that I found. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of you guys that watch my videos are do-it-yourselfers, so you might want to get this if this is something that you want to do. And this is a service that we offer. If you don't want to do it yourself, we can do it for you. So anyhow, this is a, a sight mounting uh, tool. Forrester makes it, uh, and it's a really nice tool. I mean, I've, I've done these sights on, uh, tapped and drilled on, on knee mills and, uh, you know, other methods. And this is this is one of the most efficient and best ways that I've found to do it. This is a, a really, really cool tool. So uh, we have a barrel, I've already put it in. I'm not, I'll show you the basics. I'm not gonna actually drill and tap a hole, but I'll show you the, the basics of what you do. So uh, it's got a block here. So when you put your action, and this, this works, you know, even if you had like a Remington 700 action or any action, I mean, it works on any, any gun, any barrel. And you can get extensions on this thing, so you can do any length. Uh, but anyhow, you secure your barrel in here, and it'll line up perfectly the top, uh, the, the top center line of your barrel. So that's really important. Uh, I get I get a lot of guns in where guys have uh, had other gunsmiths drill and tap it, and they can't sight their, their their scopes. You know, the scope runs out of adjustments because they get this slightly off, and it. Even though it's slight, you know, it, it doesn't need to be much. When, when, when you're off a, a, only, say, a 32nd of an inch you know, out of being straight, at 100 yards, that translates into a lot of inches. So, uh, and especially if, if you get, uh, like, the back holes a 32nd or 64th off one direction and the front holes in the other, it's going to make your, your scope base uh, canted and it's going to be very difficult to sight your gun in. So uh, anyhow, this is this is a, a tool that I've come across. Forster makes it, and this is how we're 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 tapping and drilling our barrels now. And I prefer this over over than the t than the knee mill method. Uh, but you can actually mount this to your knee mill and also incorporate your knee mill into it. So what you do is you clamp the barrel down, and this is adjustable. This this piece rolls back and forth. It's got a nut that you just loosen it and when you when you do a barrel when you're going to tap it on this one I have it set up as if we're going to tap for a scope base so uh, you want to put a piece of tape down over your barrel and mark where you want your hole so what I usually do is my first hole is not it's not super critical you want to be close but you don't need to be exactly on the mark you do your first hole and you get it set up and they have these hardened bushings. You know, that's another problem that you have when you try drilling and tapping these barrels. You're, you're going at the, at, the, at the crown of the circle and your bit wants to walk. So they have these uh, hardened bushings. You put the bushing in and this bushing is gonna hold your bit. So your bit will go in and it forces your bit to go in straight so it can't bend. So you can either do this, uh, you can do this on a drill press, you could do this at a, at an email and you can even do this with a hand drill uh, whichever method that you use you want to make sure that you got some kind of stop collar on your drill bit because if you drill in too far you just ruined your barrel you made a vent hole <laughs> that you know is gonna gonna erupt when you shoot your gun especially when you get near the chamber so uh, rule of thumb that I use when I'm drilling near the chamber is however far I drill in I want to have uh, 120 one thousandths left of metal. You know, you could call it 12 one hundreds if you want. I like dealing in thousandths. So you want 120 uh, one thousandths or more. Some guys will say, you know, if you have 100 one thousandths or more, I mean, th those are real close together, but you don't want to get less than that. Um, some guys call it, you know, 64 of an inch. Uh, but anyhow, you, you want about 120 one thousandths. So it's very important to put a stop collar on this or uh, a stop on your knee mill or a stop on your press. But anyhow, you drill this out, uh, you have a pilot hole, and then you change the bushing out for the, uh, the main hole, and then you change the bushing out again, and it will guide, it'll guide your, your uh, tap in there to make sure that it's straight. So once you get that in and drilled and tapped, 
go ahead and mount whatever you're mounting. Uh, you know, if it was a front sight, some of them only have one screw, then it's done. But if it's, say it's a, a scope base, like in this case here, and it has four holes, some scope bases you don't have six, but if this one's four, you go ahead and mount your scope base, and then you mark the rest of your holes on the tape. So you mark the tape, and then you just adjust this. Uh, they have these holes spaced, and they, they, they say that they're spaced to uh, what most configurations are on bases, and I found that's not to be true. I always have to move these. So all you do is turn the nut on the back, and then you can slide it to the next, uh, to the next mark. So I put the first one in, screw, screw down the, the base plate, uh, and then I mark the other holes, uh, and I mark it on the tape, and then I just go and line up my holes. And before you just start drilling, you know, when you look down, you know, people have, some people have stigmatisms, they, they look crooked, things like that. Before you just drill because you think it's lined up, do a little test, and you don't press that hard, and you can just mark down the hole, you can mark on the tape put a little indent on the tape and if that little indent is, is a bullseye in the hole that you marked then you can finish doing drilling it out do your little pilot hole then you'll change your bushing and, and do the main hole and change your bushing again and you do the tap and die so uh this is a forster product uh really good product you know you do it yourself or guys you know if if you want to put that kind of money into it it's not cheap, and uh, mine was back ordered. It took about a year and a half for me to get mine, uh, but I like it a lot better than using the knee mill. And for you guys that aren't the do-it-yourselfers, if you if you want a uh, you know a scope base put on, or a lot of states now, uh, when I say a lot, a handful of states now they're they're not allowing you to use scopes during muzzleloader season. So I'm getting guns in where guys want front and back sights. So uh, this is a very good tool for putting on those front and back sights. Uh, just another tip on that, if you have a Picatinny rail in the back, uh, you can get some pretty nice peep sights that attach to that Picatinny, and then all you have to do is mount the front sight. Uh, but anyhow, we can run, mount front, back sight, whatever you want to mount, we, could, we can use the tap and die and uh, line it up perfectly on your barrel. So you do it yourself or guys, uh, that's fine. I, I hear from a lot of you guys wanting tips. The Forster product is the way to go. Uh, you guys that aren't doing it yourself, if you want your barrel done, uh, just send us your barrel and whatever you want mounted onto it and where you want it, and we'll get it mounted for you uh, at a reasonable cost. So we do quite a few of these. Uh, if this is something you're interested in doing, give us a call at 336-655-7631.